Welcome to my 2022 New York Comic Con vlog. We'll start with Thursday. I didn't do any cosplay this year, but I did wear some fun shirts. This day was Star Wars and it was great to be back. I feel like after a year off with COVID and then a year that was much smaller, they were back in action. There was a lot to see, great views, places to take pictures, and just a lot happening, a lot more people, a lot more booths. Unfortunately, they were not enforcing their mask mandate. I wore mine though and thankfully did not get COVID. So uh, masks do help. And the publishers were finally back this year. Last year they didn't have booths, but this year there were many of them. It's one of those little known things that if you're missing BookCon, maybe check out New York Comic Con. There is a lot there. If you missed my book haul from Comic Con, I can link it up above. I got a lot of amazing books and I only paid for three of them. A lot of good books coming out next year. So if you're a book fan, this is actually a great place to be. And most people aren't going there for the literary piece of it. So it's a lot less wild than BookCon used to be. So many amazing booths, so many great books, and I even got to go and check out the Dragonsteel booth, which is Brandon Sanderson's publisher, and saw these great cosplayers, had to snap a picture of that. Overall, I just had a really good time. The first day was just checking things out. It was less busy, got some amazing books, met some great authors. That is one cool thing. A lot of cool author meet and greets and signings that are not ticketed, they're free. Saw Peter V. Brett for the second time, and and Katie Robert, I love her so much. Then there was this awesome Vampire Academy panel with showrunner Julie Pleck, and they even gave us merch. Check out the hat. All the palace intrigue there, and we delayed, like, we delayed Rose and Lissa running away. All because what we really want to do is, like, put the, these two women are sort of the Katniss of our, of our little world. And um, so over the length of the series, they will be the ones sort of standing up and speaking truth to power and, you know, leading the fight. But we wanted to take a really long time to get there. Like, it's, it's, it doesn't happen overnight. Societies crumble very slowly. Vampire Academy cosplayers and then a very late but delicious lunch before a final panel of the day about an adaptation of the Anne Rice Mayfair Witches books happening on AMC coming in January. It looks very creepy so if you like horror check it out. I will say the panel moderator was a little awkward. This was not one of the best panels that I went to over the weekend but I'm a little intrigued even though I don't have AMC. Overall it was a great day. Here were the books that I got on day one. Day two of Comic-Con! Friday was day two of Comic-Con and my husband came with me. He can only do one day of it. It was much busier. There were some great books yet again, but I did try to spend a little less time at the book stuff because, you know, do things that he's more interested in. He's not as much of a reader as I am. So we saw a lot of cool things, costumes, different booths. We're about to do an experience for a new Amazon Prime show, Peripheral. So we'll see what it is. It's a 3D print shop. And I don't know, they said something about 3D printed candy. This was a kind of cool activation interactive thing that they were doing for a new Amazon Prime show called The Peripheral, which apparently is based on a book. They set it up to look like a 3D print shop from the show, which was fun and gave some previews of it. And they gave us this 3D printed candy, which looks cool, but didn't taste great, but you know what? It was pretty fun. We also got some little fanny packs, which I think I just forgot to take a video of, but uh, it was a fun, interesting activation and very detailed. Here are some more shots from the day. As you can see, it was much more crowded than Thursday. That is kind of par for the course. Friday and Saturday are usually among the big busiest days. I heard from someone that there were 50,000 attendees, which is absolutely wild. I mean, you just look at the number of people. It can get a little overwhelming, so it's good to go and take breaks. There were some fun cosplayers. Here was my lunch, a poke bowl, delicious again. And then waiting in line to meet Susan Dennard. I have met her before, but I love her, love her books and got a signed Ark of the Luminaries, which I do have pre-ordered, but still very exciting. We have Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. Again, you can see all of these if you check out my book haul for everything. I love these cosplayers. Uh, so many adorable costumes. I didn't get pictures of a lot of them, but there were a few here and there. Waiting in line for a Wheel of Time Rings of Power panel. Should be interesting. Yes! Amazing! Two big panels! Right here at the end of 
Unfortunately, we weren't allowed to record during this actual panel, but it was really great. I haven't seen Wheel of Time, but it was interesting hearing them talk about it, and we had to sit through it to get to Rings of Power, which we have been watching and enjoying video on that coming on my other channel soon. But this was hilarious. Felicia Day was the moderator, and she did an excellent job, um, had such a good time at this panel. It was really entertaining, well worth the wait. And then my husband went to pick up our kids, and I stayed for this tour after dark panel if you want to see it in more detail check out the full video on my channel so we are so excited to present our upcoming releases so you can add them to your endless tbr on to saturday this was by far my most scheduled busy day i went with kind of a dark academia look not cosplay this day went to see some more books at a booth that i hadn't found yet and this is waiting in line for some signing as i got to meet alicia dow and get my book signed. I got to meet Alexandra Rowland. Neon Yang was there. Like really amazing authors and it was so cool to get to say hello. And then I was waiting in line for the Shadow and Bone panel. This is another one that I have recorded in a separate video on my channel. If you want to see, there were so many great cosplayers from Grishaverse. So you're now part of Shadow and Bone and everyone's loving it. We have another season that's going to be coming out, correct? Yes. Yeah. You. How familiar were you with the Grishaverse and the book series before this role came your way? Um, so I, I got the audition through and um, I realized it was uh, Shadow and Bone and then I was in the Six of Crows duology um, and I picked up the book straight away, started reading it and I just could not put it down until I finished the last final words of Six of Crows and then to my wonderful surprise, there was another book called Crooked Kingdom, so I went out and got that. And um, instead of finishing, instead of focusing on my audition, I was too busy reading the books because they were so good. And then I ended up doing my tape, which was my first round, and um, wasn't very good. I didn't think it was because I wanted the part so badly that no matter how many you know takes I did, it just didn't feel like it was enough. Um, and then luckily, I got a recall, and by that time, I'd finished all of it, so I could focus on my audition. Yes. And luckily, I ended up getting the part, and here I am. With yeah! The Can I just say, I know you're saying your tape was bad, but literally, when she came on the screen, I was like, oh, oh, oh no, she looks exactly like Nesh, and I was like, please let her be good, because you don't know, right? Like, so, no, so like that person is beautiful and then they start talking and I'm like oh please be quiet <laughs> but instead I started crying like halfway through that day I was like it's her it's her and then we were just like please let her want to do the show look at that so yeah it was really intense Lee I love it you're like their biggest champion I, I just love how excited you can hear it in her voice right just how exciting this is uh Freddie Similar, with the same question here, uh, were you a big fan of the books ahead of time? Did you know? Uh, I had heard of the Grisha verse before, yeah. but um, as I got the same sort of audition email through um, as Amita did, but it came with this very useful website called Grisha Wiki. <laughs> yes, and I lost two to three working days on that website. <laughs> Just, it went, I went down the rabbit holes and I, I went and bought the books and I started reading Six of Crows and I got to the first sentence, actually, of the second chapter, which says, Kaz Brecker didn't need a reason. And I thought, I am going to stop there, because if I don't get this part, I'll be so, so upset, because everything was in that one sentence. And uh, yeah, so I had to stop myself until I found out I got the part. Yeah. We're excited to see what it's going to be, and we don't really know. We, you know, I always say, you know, we were making something that we thought was cool. Yeah. We're really glad you agree. <laughs> I love words, I'm sure a lot of you do too. Um, that makes me a logophile. A lover of words, which I learned quite recently, probably from Freddy. Um, I love the way you say that, I mean, it sounds filthy. Like, let me drop some Latin on you. Logophile. The panel was delightful, they were hilarious, and then I waited for a photo op, which was 
very expensive and they really rushed us through it really quickly, unfortunately, but it came with a really great photo and it was cool to get to be in the same space as these incredible actors. I am so excited for season two. And then Stephen Graham Jones. Oh my God, I was so excited to get a copy of Don't Fear the Reaper, one of my most anticipated books for next year and meet him. He's really great. I love his books. This place has really delicious chocolate. I met Brandon Sanderson, which was fun end of the day. Sunday was the last day, by far the most chill. I brought my eight-year-old with me and he had a blast. He dressed up in his Halloween costume from Minecraft. Kids are obsessed with Minecraft and got to meet the author of the Magic Treehouse books, Mary Pope Osborne. He was so excited and got to ask her a question. We saw some cool cosplayers, which was fun and saw some exciting, very expensive Minecraft stuff. Anything Minecraft is always a hit. And then we went to Family HQ. They had some cool activations for kids where you could donate to charity and uh, <laughs> shoot a stormtrooper. So we did that and uh, he had a blast, took some pictures. And then they also had some really cool art workshops. So we did some of that. Overall, I had an incredible time. It was a lot of fun. I did some cool stuff. And I think I did a better job of not overdoing it. And uh, you know, I didn't crash for two weeks this time after it, but it was a lot of fun. And I would definitely recommend attending if you're able to do so.